Welcome. Hello, Din Diners. On the menu today, I'm going to be taking a look at a brand new cartridge for the Commodore 64. It's jam-packed full of interesting features. You could even say too many features. And don't get me wrong, I find it hard to knock any of these new products. Personally, I find it just incredible that these things are still even being made for the Commodore 64. So kudos to this team. I'll be taking a brief look at all of them, but there's one feature in particular that really interests me. It's an updated graphic user interface for the Commodore 64 that originally appeared in an earlier version in the final cartridge 3. But first, I'm going to have to find a way to get hold of one of these mini gang carts. Excuse me. Hi, um, do you have the mini gang cart? What's, what's that? Gang of carts. It's a gang of... Ah, uh, um, no, it, it's like the final cart. Final? Right here? That's, no, not like a cart. It's like a cartridge for the Commodore 64. Now you have to order from Poland. Oh, you have to get it from Poland? Yeah. How do you know all this stuff? Um, research. Now I've heard you loud and clear that you guys are, well, nuts about Ashley. No, you're nuts. So I'll be doing an upcoming episode called Ask Ashley, maybe also incorporating Ashley Reacts, where we sit her in front of her Commodore 64 and ask her to try to load a game. I'll be taking questions to Ask Ashley exclusively from patrons and PayPal supporters. But if you're not already a supporter of our little retro channel here, go on, follow the link in the description, join the fun, claim your retro rewards, and pose your gentlemanly questions to Ashley. But now, from a great gal to a great GUI. G-U-I. See, as luck would have it, I was donated a mini gang cart by my friend in retro, Drygol, a.k.a. Pete. It also came with this snazzy t-shirt, rather coincidentally featuring asteroids, uh, just like the t-shirt I was wearing was also Atari Asteroids. I'll show you what that asteroids is all about at the end of this video. And here it is. The best cartridge for the Commodore 64. Play, game, make, fun. Design and realization by Polish fans. Oh, po Polish. Dzień dobry, jak się tu jest? Ten cartridge mini gang card absolute product is schnesnym ladunowina. I don't know how to speak Polish. Now this whole user guide is in Polish. But I downloaded the English version. This seems to come in a VHS case. Comes with this neat little cheat sheet. And this is the cable to connect to a real disk drive. It's maybe a little short. It has some pretty cool features. I'll show you for that. And our SD card goes in there. So I bought a Samsung one. Is she? Now in it goes. Luckily, I hadn't cut my fingernails lately. Um, do be careful because you could lose the card inside there. Now let's stick it in the hole in the port. And it has these rather snazzy LEDs. Here is the main menu, and you can see the function keys immediately presented. Very easy to use. Ashley would be able to load these games. Press F1 for parent directory, F3 to run, and F5 is this fancy magic key. So what you can do is scroll up to any position in the directory, and it's almost telepathic. Just hit F5 wherever you are and it just does what you want it to do, be it showing a directory or loading a full program. And you can press backspace question mark for help. Help me, I don't know what I'm doing. So let's try just loading a game, just using that F5 key. I'll kill you, fried eggs. Pew. Now, as mentioned, there are a lot of features here, but let's get to the most interesting first. So this is an emulation of the Final Cartridge 3, and it has these freeze options, which I'll show you in a second. But if you go to desktop, you get this. And for this, I think I'm gonna need my Commodore 1351 mouse. But what do I do here? Ah, 
The choice of appropriate option from the menu is done by setting the arrow on the appropriate command for Oh, I think I get it now. And you can see that this release, I believe was a Cena's release and came out in January 2015. Was that 33 years after the Commodore 64? Just incredible. So it has its integrated version of BASIC, but look at this, you can, <laughs> it has drop down menus over the BASIC. Some pretty standard functions there. In BASIC menu one, you've got all these options. BASIC two, this is where the fun ones are. Auto, for example, will auto number your program. So you just type your lines of code, pretty basic code in this case, and it just auto numbers. It even has find and replace and renumber. So if you run out of line numbers, it will just renumber the whole program and give you space to add some more fun. And then the shortcuts for loading files, saving files, and a list of all the function keys that work differently in this version than in the main menu of the cartridge. And that is where things do start to get perhaps a little confusing by having so much in this mini gang card. It's not so mini, perhaps after all. Who was it who said less is more, but less is a bore? Eh, maybe it's a good thing. So what? But here's where things get really fun. The little apps that come with this. So let's try out the notepad. save our file and just try loading it back in. Beautiful. Even print. Hmm. Try that in a second. But what's this? Bold word wrap? Proportional? What witchcraft is this? You may remember my recent documentary about the Commodore Plus 4. But why was it discontinued? Was it really that bad? Let's take an even closer look at its main selling point, that business productivity software. Yeah. So first up, the word processor. Now I played around with this for a good few minutes, but there's just not much you can do with it. There's not even any bold or italics, uh, unlike perhaps the Amstrad PCW that came up just a little bit after this. But here's a computer that came out two years before the Plus 4, and it can make the whole file bold admittedly with the help of this cartridge. We can adjust our spacing, line spacing. Well, let's try that printing. Now this Commodore MPS 1200 was very kindly donated to me by Zippy Zap, AKA Racer X, AKA, well, you get the idea. I actually forgot you had to load in one sheet at a time. For some reason, we're used to auto feed here at Retro Recipes. Om nom nom nom. One thing that amazes me is when I print from my Mac to my HP printer, the printer can take like 30 seconds to just clean the heads. And But this, this is still working with the original ribbon and it prints instantly. So I made you a little letter. Put that on eBay. And we're back to desktop. And you've got D-Link and T-Link that will link a disc to become your project disc for notepad and other things. You can use a tape as well. And all the fun kind of utilities. We can change our desktop color, our pointer color, the speed of the mouse, and which port the mouse or joystick uses as well. And it also selected my 1351 mouse, which is very nice as well. We're going for kind of Macintosh gray here. We can even change key clicks and border colors and cursor blink in BASIC itself as well. If you want a more color coordinated BASIC programming environment. I'm gonna go with something a little more snazzy. Yeah. We'll look at some other apps in just a second. By 
the way, I know Kung Fu. Now what GUI would be complete without a calculator? And it works! And you've also got disk operations here. You can validate a disk, format it, initialize it, rename it, etc. Well, this is kind of interesting. Tape slow and fast. So this must be for the turbo function. Now, funnily enough, I recently found this letter that I'd written to Zap64 back in 1986. Dear Zap64, I'm writing this letter in the hope that a computer hardware manufacturer might be reading. I was wondering if it's at all possible to link the good old C2M cassette player to a cartridge in the back of the commie and make it possible to load programs a lot faster by speeding up the C2M dataset and letting the cartridge store the speedy information in its memory buffer and feed it into the commie in program format. Please let me know. Yeah, well, you get the idea. So apparently I was a bit of an inventor back in 1986. Well, this doesn't exactly speed up the cassette, but it does offer a turbo function, uh, which works in a similar way to perhaps compressing a zip file does today. So let's just demonstrate how the slow version works first. Can I have a P please, Bob? And then to test the turbo function, I'm just going to try saving a, a regular program here that I've loaded. I press record and play on the tape. And now we can load it back using fast load. Now I won't bore you with the full process, but in my test it was about seven times faster using the fast turbo option. Pretty nice. But perhaps one of the coolest features of the mini gang cart itself is its native ability to fast load disks. You can use pretty much any disk drive you can throw at it. This here is a Commodore 1581 using three and a half inch disks. So let's load up Lemmings. And yep, that really was that fast. Let's see that again. Now it took a while after that to decompress in the computer's memory, but I've got to say that disk fast load is pretty cool. Another thing I really like about this is it uses an original old school ceramic EEPROM. It stores everything in its 8 megabits. And this is similar to the EEPROMs used on the Voyager spacecraft. That's how retro it is. And if you want to design your own PCB like this, I recommend PCBWay. They offer a full assembly service. Now, as we all know, PCB stands for Polish Cartridge Board, doesn't it? And back in the GUI here, we've got a whole host of utilities thrown in for good measure with this new version. Clearing the disk? No, wait, don't clear my disk. Cancel that. This one's really useful. It's a cassette azimuth alignment tool. Now my cassette is aligned, so I'm not gonna risk messing it up, but you just put a screwdriver in the head alignment screw slot and you turn it until these lines get as straight as they possibly can. Exploding? Wait, no! Ah. And here's some of the other tools, apart from me. There's even yet another version of BASIC. The amount of BASICs on this cartridge is not really very basic. There's even a sprite editor. 
Now there's a ton of other utilities built natively into the non-GUI side of the mini gang cart. Even a disc head alignment tool. You know, it's really hard to know how to rate this cartridge. This isn't really a review as a result because reviewing this would be like reviewing everything that's on it. Wait, Flappy Bird? <laughs> Which are just so varied that it wouldn't be possible. If there was a rating for cramming as many programs as possible in, then you'd have to give this five out of five. That said, most of this stuff, if not all of it, is available just to download and put on an SD to IEC card in its own right. But some of those native features like the Fast Disk Loader are pretty damn cool. As is this. It's a built-in Asteroids game, written by one of the creators of this cartridge, Weggy. Uh, don't have any coins on me. Breath mint? Hey, it accepted the breath mint. Well, I'm gonna have some fun playing this game, and then maybe I'll load some more discs really, really fast. But what do you think about this cartridge? Is it a case of less is more? Or is there no such thing as too much when it comes to new products for the Commodore 64? Comment below and cheerio. Like a little bit Polish. We'll go together. Come on, let's okay, go. Let's go. <laughs>